It's time to take command with former NFL tight end Logan Paulson and former Commander's Beat reporter Craig Hoffman. Take Command podcast from Odyssey Sports. I'm Craig Hoffman. He is Logan Paulson, and we did it. We made it. Training camp <laughs> is here, Logan. Uh, we were both out there this morning. Uh, feel I feel still sunbaked. I'm still in my uh, my. Everyone asks me every year. Man, how do you how you out there in a hoodie? How you out there in long sleeves? And I'm like, because I am not getting sunburned. I do not want leather skin by Friday. Uh, so I'm still in my UV protection hoodie as we record this podcast. That's how fresh we are off the practice field, Logan. We'll do our big training camp preview today as well, even though technically it's underway. But let's start off first practice. Uh, you've been you've been watching it back on tape as well. Yeah. What uh what stands out for you? Because for me, I'll just say big picture. It felt very uneven today. Yeah, I mean, it feels like a classic first day of practice. You know what I mean? Like there was some really good stuff. Like I thought Montez Sweat in the fr- like. I mean, I don't. They just practice a ton. They got a ton of reps, and we were just talking about that before we started. In the first two minute period, I thought Montez did an excellent job, just winning his rushes and looking good. FA flashed. John had a nice win, you know. But it's you can tell the offensive line is kind of shaking off some of that summertime rust and kind of coming along. So you know, it's the first day. There was a couple. Uh, you know, kind of open guys in the way that there weren't open guys during OTAs and minicamp, which, you know, again, it's kind of an, it's early. It's the first practice back. So guys are like, oh, is that my, I got, oh, I got to match that. Okay, cool, cool, cool. And then um, there was a couple interceptions, kind of weird interceptions and weird completions today. Like yep. there was a, there was one that I remember where Cole bats the ball. Like he tries to catch the ball, but is in yep, like bats kind of it up and Casimir Allen gets it. And Casimir Allen gets it. And then a couple plays later, there's a, a tip ball off of like kind of a weird one going on an out route and it bounces right to the defender in a two minute period. So kind of a, a weird, a weird day, you know, I think guys look, look physically good. You know what I mean? I think that's important. Um, and, uh, and so I think overall first day, you know, like it's the first day, there's a reason it's not open to, it's not open to fans, I think, you know, cause like you're kind of working through some stuff and logistically working it all out. But I think um, overall first days in the books and it was hot a lot of adversity for those guys, and I think they uh, they handled it pretty darn good. So yeah, I could not believe how hot it was for nine o'clock in the morning. That was gross. Um, well, it dude, just kept, it's gonna be hotter I, tomorrow. So yeah, I know. I was standing at one point during the team period. It was me, Kaim, and Chick Hernandez were uh, kind of in the back of the end zone, <laughs> and I was think I was like, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna complain about the heat. Like it is what it is. We're all out here, but I really want to. And then like as I'm as I'm biting my tongue, Chick is like, Hey, you guys know it's hot out here. <laughs> and, it's just, I can't imagine being out there in, in the shells and I, I mean, running around, I'm sure feels good, but you know, having a big old helmet on your head, uh, certainly, certainly not super fun in the heat. Um, let's go through a couple, couple of, of key points. One health wise today, overall, a very good day. Nobody gets hurt. Nobody leaves right. the practice field. Love that. Still some guys working back. Jamin Davis, um, it, I think is going to take like a couple days probably to be fully running with the ones and, and getting up to speed after he didn't have any reps in the spring. Right. I did think that was interesting that they so didn't did just throw him out there with the ones. So we can, we can unpack that in a second. Only guy that was not out there today was Deron Payne has a minor toe issue. They're keeping him out for precautionary reasons. If anything is, is not a hundred percent right at this point in the year with one of your key guys, standard operating procedure, nothing to no. freak out about. If he's still not practicing in a week, let's get worried. Yeah. Um, other than that, um, let's start off with the quarterbacks. Yeah. I thought Hal was all over the place today. And I was talking to, to Sam Fortier on the sideline about this. And he's like, I don't know. I thought he had a couple of really good throws. I'm like, he did. He did. He has a couple of really nice throws. He shows you the potential. He flashes a couple of times. But to me, Logan, what I think today was, was a really, really healthy reality check, which is to say he is a guy with so much potential that I think could be really good. And, I, and my opinion hasn't changed on what he is or isn't going to be this season. Um, but it's a good reminder for the, the fans that just see the potential and think about all positive, everything burgundy and gold colored glasses, that he's got a long way to go. That it's not about how good you can be. It's about how consistently you produce a, a positive result. And from overthrows to you know missing guys to whatever, like he had stuff today that looked like a guy that hasn't played a ton of football because that's who he is. It's going to get better. Um, and he's got a lot of talent and he's got great coaching around him and, and all that stuff is going to help. Um, and it is also a reminder, I think that Eric the play calling and, and you know, making his job easy 
is an essential part of success this season. But I think, I think what you saw today was a very uneven day from Sam Howell, where you saw some of the excellent stuff that, that makes him special, being able to fit balls in good ball placement at times, good rhythm and some other downs where you're just kind of going like, what the hell was that? Because what else do you expect this time of year? I mean, it's some misses, but I think overall, like I was generally kind of, positive on the day I would say you know like it's again it's kind of in the same way that it's the first day you 100%. Know, for, him, for him to be making some throws that you feel pretty good about and obviously there was some kind of odd misses but I didn't feel like he was late too late with anything I didn't feel like he was too early with anything I felt like his timing was pretty good and you know there's a couple things here and there but um you know he made a really nice throw to Antonio Gibson in seven on seven kind of yep. you know dropping in the bucket felt good about that and like just generally timing small window throws all that kind of stuff felt really sharp so uh, on the whole i've uh, you know again it's the first day but you know it's like a c plus kind of day for him and i think that's fine and um hopefully he continues to get better and i think he will um i think the offense will continue to get better and you know it's so weird talking about one day of practice but it's it's the first day so there were some mistakes there were some good things you can tell guys are kind of finding their legs a little bit mm -hmm. and that's just going to get better as you go so yeah, no, I, I definitely think that's true. Um, there was there was one play in particular that I was curious to ask you about. Um, Terry had a completion uh, where he runs an in and out route uh, on Forbes, yeah. and the only reason I had noted it in my was notes that Paul was completed? it was it was. Yeah, and it was a really good route. I mean, Forbes Forbes was an interesting one to watch today. Uh, Kyle and I were talking about this on the side where, you know, he shows his recovery speed a lot, but like, do you want to always be recovering? Not in the sure. NFL, not not at this level. So it's going to be something where he's going to have to learn to pick and choose his spots of where he can gamble and not, and you know, it's day one again. Yeah. But he, um, Forbes jumps a little bit on, on it. Terry puts runs a really nice, what looks to me like a really nice route uh, coming in gets Forbes to bite down on it, then comes back out, makes a tough contest, contested catch. And as he's jogging back to the sideline, the enemy calls him over. And I was just curious from watching the rep and, and with your level of expertise, if you have any idea what Eric could have been bringing him over about. Yeah. He brought Forbes over. You're saying, you know, he brought Terry over. Mm. Yeah. So on that route, I thought Terry beat him too bad off the line of scrimmage, honestly. Like he beat him. It was a really, so basically like it, it's like what you'd call like a Venus in Kyle's offense. I don't even know if Kyle still calls it that, but basically it's like a now route. So it's like a one step slant and in, and then you're returning out. So everybody in the NFL runs a version of this route. Yeah. They just call it something different. And Peyton so Manning, you, famously in uh, one of his Peyton's places shows, they call it the burger route because it was in and out. Which and I, out. I was, sure. Yeah. Cute. And, and so like basically on that route, like anytime you run a double move for all those kids at home, you don't want to beat them too bad on the first one that you can't get back out of it. And so like basically Terry does like a nice little double stick, you know, steps, Smoked him. steps left, right, gets Forbes off the spot really nice. Then uh, beats his inside hand runs in hard. And I'm like, if you had the slant here, this is a touchdown. Like that's how clean the win was. Right. And so that is too clean of a win on that. You kind of want a messy win and then you can shed them off late. And then you want to, you want to kind of preserve the, the out of that is what I would say. Like, and again, I don't know what EB is coaching them on. Yeah. But if well, I was that, coaching, that's what I would, that's what, if I had to guess something, that's what I would have guessed. Yeah. And again, like we don't know. And like, it could be like, Hey man, like nice job or whatever he's saying. But I would say like, anytime you're running a double move, you don't want to win too bad right away. And Terry beat him pr very, very cleanly. And so I think that's what I would just say. I say, hey, Terry, man, like, you know, push up a little bit more. Take your time. Let him feel like he's got you. So when you separate back out, that throwing one is a little bit better. And it's not this kind of – it was – talk about a nice throw by Sam. Holy cow, that was a perfect yeah. ball by Sam. So, you know, like there's throw like that, which like literally tight, very tight window, very far throw, only where Terry can get it. Because on the retread, Forbes is actually in a pretty good spot to like break the ball up, you know. But um, Terry does a great job catching the football because I because I'm watching it rewatching on the film and I did he catch that but you were right there so you yeah. know but um yeah I'd say that if I was one coaching point that's what it would be just a hey, little bit messier on the on the release there yeah but that's like the kind of detail that you know does that get cleaned up in years past and yeah. you know what kind of caliber of coaching are, are these guys getting and you know hey good job result fine but like you mentioned like it took a perfect throw from Sam it took this outstretched diving catch from Terry 
to be in a place where only he could get it away from right. Forbes, where if he runs the better version of the route, doesn't win so decisively on the, on the first of the double move and instead wins decisively on a second, can Sam put it somewhere where he can catch it standing up and get a run up the sideline, get an, maybe even a first down as he's stiff arming a guy like Forbes for seven, eight yards getting pushed out of bounds. So like those are the details that help you win. And um, I just thought it was interesting that, you know, t I, it's just something that I'm not used to. Like, you know, the offensive coordinator taking the time while he's running the next play to call the star wide receiver over and give him some extra points right then and there. That doesn't mean that they wouldn't necessarily be brought up in the past by a guy like Scott in a meeting room, sure. but it's just it's just a noticeable difference. And, you know, there's only so much to talk about after one day of practice. Well, yeah, I think that's the other thing is, you know, obviously like I'm, I'm, I'm an OC now in high school. And one of the things like I remember now that I'm in it, you kind of see the value of doing stuff like that. Like, cause Kyle was, was very methodical about that. Hey man, no, like do it like this. Hey, we got to be here. Here's the timing. And like, it's a testament to his genius to be able to hold the plays that he's calling, get the corrections called and do the next thing. So I think that that is, it's, it's important, man. Cause the more times you get it as a player, the easier it is for you to make it kind of second nature. Right. So like there is a, a play later where they're running four verticals. And I kind of thought to myself, man, if, if the guy who's number three here is a little bit wider, like that's probably a touchdown and, and, you know, you don't see it on the field. So that's where the meetings are for. Right. And I, you know, I'm just assuming that's the correction they want to make, but, um, but that kind of stuff is so, so important. It's so valuable because it's really the devil's in the details. I think we've talked about this before on the show. It's not like, there's no like magic bullet, you know, like there's the, if you watch Andy Reid's office, if, if you watch Kansas City, if you watch Kyle, they do a good job of scheming you up and winning with the pen. But also there's a certain level of detail to like just basic stuff that puts you in a better position to be successful. So I think that's what you're seeing here. And like, that's kind of what you're alluding to there with the EB thing. So I'm super excited. Uh, you know, early, it's early. They didn't do anything crazy offensively today. They're nothing crazy defensively, but um, it's just, it. that is how you win football games is the detail, right? Because you know, week seven, when they run that route and Terry's open by 10 yards and gets a big completion and is able to run for a 30 yard gain in a two minute situation, like that wins your football games. And the more times as a coach, you can get that addressed, the more likely the corrections made. Tag this podcast. We'll, ins we'll, we'll insert this part in that, in that <laughs> podcast in our film breakdown. Uh, so defensively, I, I mean, I think to me, the most important thing on the day, well, there's two most important things. Um, one is Jamin. We'll circle back to him in a second. Yeah. Two yeah. is, which is just like, okay, where is he? How does it, how does that develop something to keep an eye on that maybe we didn't have a pin in before, but I loved seeing chase out there. Sans knee brace, explosive, yeah. decisive. I thought he had a good day from what I, you know, again, you're trying to watch so much at once. Yeah. So for all I know, I watched three good reps and he actually stunk the rest of practice. But yeah. when I was, when I was watching him in some of the team periods, I felt like he was more explosive certainly than last year. Um, and he played with like an urgency and, you know, didn't stutter step. He, he just, he just went and mm -hmm. you'd see him bend and dip around the outside, good hand, you know, work and, and, and punch and tackles out of the way. It's hard to know just how effective it is because there's no pads, but I, I think what you're looking for in these first couple of days without pads specifically from chase young is, is there any hesitancy? And the answer was no. And I think that was great to see. Yeah. I mean, I've, I, you know, I thought he had a good day. I, I think, you know, if someone deserves credit, Charles Leno deserves some credit. I thought Leno came out with like a good, just look good. Leno looked good, very sharp. And, you know, like in, like you said, in these periods, it's really hard to tell like who's winning exactly. Cause like there's one where Chase kind of gets a late win, balls out. It's like, is that, that's probably, that looks like he might be credit, like, Trace might be asking for a sack, but I think the ball, you know what I'm saying? So it's tough to see yeah. like where he's at, but in terms of movement stuff, I thought it was good. I just, I just want him to be as polished, you know, as like a guy like Montez was today. Like Montez, like looks like he's improved. He's added some stuff to his repertoire. He had a very good understanding of what it took to beat Wiley today. And I think that that is something that I'm just kind of waiting for Chase to kind of get into. Right. And you know, it's the first day of practice. So like he's got sure. three weeks to kind of figure all that stuff out. Um, but you know, like John Allen, like doesn't miss a beat. looks like the same guy get beat, beat some guys on a couple inside moves. That's great. You know? And so like, that's kind of, I think it's because everybody else in the group, F.A. Obata, great job rushing from the three technique today. All those guys look so good. It's like Chase is still look. It's not physically. He's fine. It's the technical element that you're kind of saying, 
all right, when's that going to kind of turn the corner? And I think he's perfectly capable of it. Like I've got all the confidence in the world in Chase, but um, you know, I'm still kind of waiting to see that, I guess. Yeah, it's it's one box you can tick at a time, though. I, and I guess you could tick tick them both. He could come out and be technically great and move great. Yeah. But I'm at least I'm happy he at least got one because he did not even when he played last year, like he wasn't quite as explosive and and decisive as and to, he and, had been. And to kind of follow up on that, like you you mentioned, like there's times where he's just running around, like being physically freaky, you know. And I think that mm-hmm. gets him eight to twelve sacks. You know what I'm saying? So like, there's not there. This is a good outcome if he's physically ready to go, I guess is what I'm saying. So there's no reason yeah. to be like, oh, God, Chase is imperfect. It's like physically had some reps against Leno, who, like I said, I thought had a very good day. And you're like, man, that's that's almost winning football right there. So uh, he did a good job. You know, like I'm just saying like one of my things I'm looking for for the rest of the training camp. But good, good yeah. day for him, I think. Uh, Logan Thomas, by the way, also uh, no yep. knee brace today. So good to see both those guys back uh, feeling like themselves or is, is- – good as they can and not feeling like they need that brace uh to support all right last but not least on the the practice front today what do we make of the fact that jamin davis was with the twos most of the day they rotated a little bit so i think he did at some point depending on packages and stuff get some reps with the ones but it started as you know coney cody barton and Kalik hudson and then they were playing exclusively with either a buffalo or another nickel player rashad wild goose got some snaps cam curl got the snap some snaps in the buffalo nickel obviously the twos got out there quan martin was in that spot um so what do you what do you make of that um i don't know honestly like you know because cam came back and he's back in his normal spot and cam and jamin aren't necessarily the same guy i think it's the first day i think they're probably trying to see what it is and i think i kind of get a feeling again i haven't talked to anybody about this i get a feeling just in how they've handled jamin in the past that they feel like they need to give jamin like a little bit of a prod you know they can be really hard with him and i think this might be a way just to be like hey man like nothing, nothing is for sure. And like we've talked about, Klee Hudson had a very good spring. So like you got to earn it back. And I think Jamin, look, he did some stuff that he did really good today. And I think that's good. It's just about continuing to build in that. And I think by the end of this week, you'll probably see him getting more reps with the ones. And probably by the end of camp, he'll be getting even more reps, if not all the reps with the ones. So I think it'll take some time, but I just feel like that's kind of how they've handled him. You know, they've been a little bit, aggressive is that the right word i don't know if that's the right word or not like a little bit harsh like you know like yeah, you, you, i think harsh coach, is like, the, the right word yeah you, you know you you kind of there's certain guys that respond well to hard coaching and i kind of feel like they see jamin in that way and that's what this to me falls in that category in my in my opinion to me that i mean i criticized them for how they handled jamin last year and then i look like an idiot because he was awesome um but you know so yeah. my two cents take it for what it's worth i think i would be valuing the cohesion with Cody Barton. If I think that's going to be my starting linebacking core, I think I would, I would value getting Jamin those reps and not worry about his motivation at this point. They know more than I do. Um, they know where he's at. There's also an element of like letting him get up to speed, um, which he was asked about today and said like, yeah, I'm just trying to get up to speed. Um, and the speed of the twos is going to be a little bit slower than the speed of the ones. And so if he can operate with the twos, get some reps in there, but I, I, then, then, and that helps him, you know, long-term fine. I think the other thing that was interesting was he was playing will with the twos because David, he was out there with Mayo yeah. and I kind of anticipated him being the starting middle linebacker for this team. So I am yep. very curious to see how that, you know, goes over the next couple of days. Um, they have options. They like obviously with Barton and, and Mayo is always the kind of their fail safe. But, um, I, I certainly expected Jamin after what he did in games in this defense last year as the Mike linebacker to continue in that role and to see him not out there with the ones I hope is just a, an end to the process of his rehab and not some other game that's being played about a guy who's a first round pick. Like he's got to be great for them. He was a first round pick. That's why you take first round picks. And if not, I think it speaks poorly of them. Not, not like that's it. That sign seal delivered fate, but like, that definitively goes in the negative category if Jamie Davis is a rotational backup by year three after being a first rounder. Yeah, and I don't want to like we should pump the brakes. It's the first day. Yeah. You know, like we're doing yeah, a lot yeah. of speculation. Like well, we we can revisit this, I think. Revisit that kind of line of thinking. Yeah. I think why I place. why I said if. Yeah, but I think the um but I think that if in in my opinion, like in o- in mini camp and OTAs, they kind of move pieces around, especially in mm-hmm. the back end. You know, you get Quan playing different spots, you get 
you know, St. Juice playing different spots. You get Forbes at the nickel and everyone goes, oh, God, like, what are they doing? What's happening? But it's like you need like more longitudinal data. Right. So for today, that's something to, to make note of. And, you know, if you tune into this podcast, we'll update you on that. But um, I wouldn't be surprised if tomorrow or two days from now he's playing Mike. And Mayo's, you know, I mean, they're going to move those pieces around because ultimately you want to get your best guys on the field. And, you know, Kalik's done a great job. He did a great job in OTAs. He did a great job in the last game of the season against the uh, against the Cowboys. Uh, they're going to, the, if they can find a way to get the best couple guys on the field, I think they're going to try and do that. So, Yeah, definitely. Thanks for watching this clip of Take Command. First, why don't, you, why don't you like it? It lets other people know that it was good. And then they should watch it too. And Logan, we have a new exclusive home for full episodes. We do. 1067, the fans YouTube page. Go check it out and please subscribe. Yeah, do, do what Logan said. Do He's it. Very, very smart.